Hi, Shalom friends. If I ask you to make a list of some of the most beneficial and uh, wonderful inventions of the last 50, 60 years, you'd probably need a couple of notebooks. So many wonderful things have been invented and uh, we still use them. There have also been hundreds of patents and inventions which uh, the inventor thought would go, but uh, the people didn't think it was so necessary or beneficial, and they fell into disuse. But it's very rare to find an invention, which according to some, are very, very harmful to the human psyche, and yet it's ubiquitous. It's found everywhere. Well, are you intrigued? It's called the snooze button on your alarm clock. In the 1959, 1960, I think it was Westinghouse, came out with an alarm clock. And on top of the alarm clock, there was a button you could press five minutes sleep, 10 minutes more sleep. Now you could think to yourself, that's a convenience. How could that be harmful? And stop and consider this. What, why do you have an alarm clock? Well, for most of us, uh, there's a certain time where we're supposed to begin our day. And why do we begin our day at a certain time? Because in our estimation, we need to get up at that time to be productive, whether it be to go to work or to take care of the house or whatever we decide to do. So let's make believe um, to have a productive day and a full day, you have to get up at 7 o'clock. So the alarm rings, it's seven o'clock, and what's your first thought? Hmm, let me push off the inevitable. Let me procrastinate. And you hit 10 minutes. It's not only the 10 minutes, it's, it's an attitude. It's, I have responsibilities, but why not push it off? You say, well, no, I need another 10 minutes. So then make it for 7.10. Well, better yet, make it for 7.15. But to acknowledge that I'm supposed to get up at 7, and then to deliberately revel in the forbidden fruit, ha, 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 I'm supposed to get up at 7, but I'm not going to do that. No, no. I, that, 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 that's an attitude which is really unhealthy. Because we should embrace responsibility. And that's what's truly human. So, of course, I'm not going to exaggerate and say it is the most harmful thing that ever happened. But I will say that those that suggest it as being a harmful influence, I, I could see their point. And I even have perhaps a scriptural reference to this. In the book called The Holy Tanya, the author brings to our attention the following. In biblical uh, history, one of the most momentous episodes and a confrontation, in a sense, between what man wants and what God wants takes place in the beginning of Jewish history with Father Abraham. In essence, Abraham um, and his wife Sarah longed for a child and God miraculously pro pro promised them that miraculously they would have such a child. And indeed, Sarah at the age of 90 gives birth to a boy whose name is Isaac, Yitzchak. Yitzchak is a wonderful son in every respect. A delight. And not only is he a delightful son to his parents, he's also a student of his father's teachings. And he's an activist, and he's his father's, so to speak, right hand. So here we have an incredibly strong bond between an old father and a beloved son who's an only son to the mother. And at the age of 37, God says to Abraham, bring your son up to me on a mountain that I will show you and bring him as an offering. We all know the story. We know the happy ending of the story. Abraham thinking that to bring his son as an offering entails and includes giving up 
his son to God, his physical life. But at the end, it was only a test. Actually, God wanted to see, would he be willing to give up his son? So in this book called the Tanya, he asked a question. If God came to you, and you were convinced without a shadow of a doubt that God was speaking to you, wouldn't you perhaps muster enough courage and enough resolve to do the will of God? Yes, maybe many of us would not, but certainly some of us would rise to the occasion. After all, we believe and revere and worship the Almighty God. And God gives us life. And if he were to say, give me up your money or sacrifice your home or yourself, we would do it. So what makes the test of Abraham so momentous? God spoke to him. And he answers an amazing thing. The fact that Abraham listened to God is awesome. But if you look into the scripture, it says, Abraham got up early in the morning to fulfill the will of God. Now, when there is something which is difficult, we tend to push it off. Something is painful, we wait for the last possible moment. Very few of us want to take a root canal. It's when the pain becomes unbearable or it's an absolute necessity, then we're willing to do it. For Abraham, God said, bring me your son. He didn't exactly say when. He could have had a, a breakfast with him. They could have gone, he, his wife could have gone on an outing. He could have postponed the inevitable. But he didn't. He got up early. He had a responsibility. He was tasked with a, an act and he did it with alacrity says the Holy Rebbe that this is a teaching for us that when we have an opportunity to do something, something positive, something holy, something noble, it's not only the act that counts, but it's the enthusiasm. And enthusiasm is translated as, I want to do this as soon as possible. So the next time um, you're you're given the opportunity to do something good, I know you'll do it, but don't procrastinate. Why wait? If it's good, do it now. If it's good and necessary, then the sooner the better. And what this is an attitude which is actually incredibly important for all of us to absorb. In fact, there's a, a wonderful tradition in the Jewish tradition that says, if you were given the opportunity to meet someone in, very important, for example, in days of old, if you were given the opportunity to meet the king, every person would jump at that opportunity. Says the Jewish tradition, when you wake up in the morning, the king of all kings, the almighty God, is waiting for you. How could you stay in bed? Well, <laughs> it's really, to me, a double lesson. Not only to do things with alacrity, but to know that God is waiting for me. I wouldn't even want to wait. I wouldn't want even a taxi driver to wait for me. I mean, after all, a little courtesy that the almighty should wait for me. So I'm going to resolve, and I hope you'll join me with it, with this resolve, that when we get a chance to do what's right, we're going to do it. And then you ask, but when do I get a chance to procrastinate? And the answer is when it comes to do something bad. <laughs> Say, not now, a little bit later. How about tomorrow? And I'm sure by absorbing these lessons, we will become really fine individuals. Shalom.